Hello, Americans. <laughs> Here I am again. <laughs> We make a translation, you know, German to English. Wissen Sie, ich bin in Berlin aufgewachsen. Da gibt's keine Pferde. You know, I grew up in Berlin, and there are no horses. So when I had to deal with this topic, I was very afraid. You see, I was standing next to a horse like this for the first time, and I thought, Whoa, it's huge. And then I was always afraid that it would step on my toes. And then their mouth is coming close, and then the stuff is coming out of it, and I'm like, oh my God, what did I get into here? Why did I do this? I'm a human physician, not a vet. But then there were some studies, and this was already um, hinted at here in northern Germany, some world-famous uh, animal stables, and they examined many things, behavioral features, the effects of the beamer, and things like that. And then one day the question arose, can't you measure some functionalities? Klopp, can you measure that? So I thought, well... That might be simple. We just use the technology we use for human beings and transfer it to, to horses. But that was a mistake. Reflo, um, reflex, reflex spectrography and Doppler methods, yes, those can be used. But some other methods were a problem. We had to get new equipment for the horse, basically develop it brand new, which was not that simple. So then you have different layer thicknesses, and the tissues are different, and things like that. This is all very difficult. So it took a long time. And when, uh, if I'm showing you something today, then you have to be excited because we are the first ones that use intravenal micros uh, that have looked intra venically, microscopically, at horse. So, I'm showing you a video. So that led to some conclusions. But I want to explain this to you uh, very um, calmly and peacefully. Please understand if some things are in German. I'll explain everything. And uh, you also have an interpreter explaining it to you. Chapter 3, well, I wanted to tell you something different, actually, but that's... Uh, it went differently. So anyway, here's what we're looking at here. Those are the first um, shots of the horse's microcirculation, non-injured tissue. You might be disappointed because you'll say, I've seen better things from Klopp in the human world. So this is a very long path, but it was sufficient at first to start dealing with the topic. So look at the vessel, uh, the artery in the in the in the center there. See the vasomotion, because then the question arose: Does this horse even have spontaneous vasomotion? Well, this is the first time we're seeing it here. So don't be disappointed. All beginnings are hard. So take a look at that. So sieht das aus. That's what it looks like. Ja, jetzt schauen Sie mal in dieses Look Gewebe. at this Sie tissue here. Überrascht sein wie ich. And then you'll be just as surprised as I am, because Gewebe what you're seeing here also is tissue liquid, so the lymphatic flow. Take a look at that. It's incredible, because this is a lot more strong than with human beings. It's a lot stronger. Even just observing the microcirculation phenomena, we notice it's totally different from humans. So take a look at the center of the image here, and you'll see the stream of liquid in this lymphatic system. It's incredible. It's a lot more powerful than it is with humans. So probably even local regulation will work a little bit differently from humans. So there's a different flow speed and a different flow volume. So well, I mean, no one had seen this before. So this leads to conclusions, or it will lead to conclusions. Take a look at it again here. This stream of liquid, it's 
the expression of the streams of liquid in the environment of the blood capillaries, which is a lot more strong, uh, which is a lot stronger than it is with human beings. And so what you have to know here is that the horse uh, that the horse has a lot more red blood cells per blood volume, per blood unit, per blood unit than humans, but hemoglobin content in the horse's blood cells is a lot lower than with humans, and the diameter of the red blood cells are also smaller than with humans, so the conditions are a little bit different. So take another look here, this movement of the initial lymphatic uh, flow, it's incredible. You know the images from human beings, from us, so this here is a little bit of a different world. Yes. Horses are animals that are used to fleeing. They are prey animals. Cats are different. They can sprint very fast, but they get tired. Meanwhile, horses can run for a very long time. So the regulatory system of the local circulation must be different. So don't be disappointed when you see these pictures, because they've already um, gathered a lot of attention. Take a look at these values. The speed of the initial lymphatic flow is expressed in um, millimeters per second. Humans are in, um, the horse is green here and the humans are orange or yellow and it's almost two and a half, half times as, as fast. And this is incredible. So that gets you thinking. Because this is also an expression of the uh, circulation in the smallest blood vessels. We are going to publish this shortly because this has never been shown in the world like this. This is just a rough outline of the measured data. It's going to have to be improved for actual publication. So let's take a look at spontaneous vasomotion and not the analys analyses we know from humans but actually the um, vibration, the fluctuation of the vibration, how many peaks and valleys are there per minute, T per minute. So then humans orange and horse yellow or looks kind of green to the interpreter, but um, 100 people here in an adult age and 100 adult horses. So we examined 100 horses in order for us to get this uh, frequency distribution. And before us, no one had done that, so we were uh, the ones who started this. And there were clear differences. It's almost a double. The horse reacts, in other words, reacts in the with a local circulation reaction that is much stronger than the reaction of a human being. So this is noticeable. We used to believe we used to always believe that horses are more grateful for a beamer signal than a human being. And these values seem to confirm that. Take a look at this. The next question was, let's examine 100 horses after, uh, that were examined after having a that were with beamer stimulation and without beamer stimulation after having a small strain. So then yellow again with beamer and blue without beamer. So this is incredible. The horse really does react a lot more strongly than a human. Look at this frequency distribution among a hundred horses. It's almost twice the value. That means we have a proven physiologically effective stimulation in the horse that we provided for the horse. And that means shorter regeneration times, better defense against chronic inflammation, and so on and so forth. My goodness, this is incredible. I think when we're going to publish this in a few weeks, we are going to get a lot of attention in veterinary medicine. So I think that's a beautiful thing for me. We don't just examine a therapy option. We are at the same time making a contribution to the insights in animal health. And for that, I was in North uh, Western Germany and I got all the leading animal health physicians and I said, let's work together. Let's do a, let's do a convention. 
Let's enter new territory together. And as a result, we're now presenting the Beamer, the Beamer with its effectiveness, effects that have not been known thus far. So take a look at this picture. This picture will tell you everything you need to know. And it's, um, it's, it's a classic distribution. This is examined. You cannot argue with this. A hundred individuals, a sample size of a hundred individuals that I found in the Berlin environment. So I found a hundred animals in the Berlin area. So that was the first step. A hundred adult horses. These are real results. So let's note here. The horse reacts more strong, strongly. So why? I mean, don't get scared. I have to do some science here. Don't be afraid. This is a micro vessel. In yellow, you see the sheer um, force. And in blue, you have the speed. The speed gradient, uh, acceleration gradient. And what do you notice there when you compare human and horse? A horse is in a different world. The speeds are greater. And the... Um, the sheer force is lower. That's because horses are used to fleeing. They're fleeing animals. So the sheer stress, excuse the interpreter, the sheer stress is the term for that. So we are less ready to go. Let me put it uh, roughly. A horse is making an all or nothing decision for local circulation. Either stand and relax or go. Over the next few months, we're going to continue our research. And for me, this is a little bit unusual. You have to know that because I actually can't stand horses. So, schauen sich das mal an. But take a look at this. This will be um, in the literature. Microcirculation of the horse in the center, a big micro vessel and capillaries, and in between body cells. That is an initial. That's the uh, condition of, a, of an exhausted horse, which is ready for regeneration. So let's now turn on the beamer. Now we want to know what happens. This is the moment. I'm showing you an image here, but this image is confirmed by measured data, by sufficient, reliable data for animal health. Did you see? Two to three minutes. Let's do a few more. Let's do it for a few more minutes. Be patient. Let's put it back on the same spot and keep uh, and always think of the fact that no human being has ever seen this before. You guys here. Just a few minutes of patience here. The regulation processes, even in the horse, don't react upon the press of a button, just like with human beings. No, the regulation systems need a little bit of time. We want to stimulate the body's own mechanisms. And that requires a little bit of time. Do you see that? That's the triumph. We did not. We did everything we could here. We didn't spare any expense or effort here. And here's a second example from a different spot from a different animal. Take a look at this. That's the joy of the researcher. I could look at this for hours, but don't worry. You don't have to look at it that long. And what it shows you is that the characteristics that we've changed through our stimulation, that they persist over a longer period of time, which is key. Take a look at it. I, I let it sit there for a few minutes, and you've got to give me that as a, as a researcher. Just like a painter, they put their picture up and people have to look at it for a while. <laughs> so take a look at this. This is the microcirculation of an exhausted horse. And now this horse wants to regenerate. So let's give it some support. But let's take a look at it first. This is almost a um, problem with the circulation. It's almost a dysfunction. You see that in the upper half of the picture, there's one microvessel that's 
that's almost in stasis. So this is not going to kill the horse, but it's going to lead to the horse to react worse. So let's turn on the beamer. So take a look at the before, and then 10 minutes after. See that? from me. No comment from me. That is my comment. That's my comment right there. You see, we continue our work, and the next step is the exact analysis of the vibration. And who is that? Das ist Luise. That's Luise. Die hat mich geliebt, die she loved me, this mayor. <laughs> Freunde, wir arbeiten My weiter. friends, we'll continue our work. Zeit ja, Time getreten, will go by. Medizin We are entering new territory in animal health, which is beautiful for a researcher. It's like a mountain climber. A mountain climber always is excited when he's the first one up on the top of the mountain at the summit where no one has been before. We have the same kind of ambition. We also have our dreams. Yeah. So how is this development going to go on? We're going to complete the technology. We're going to be able to do better analysis in just a few months. We're going to perfect our vibration analysis, and then at some point, be patient, but at some point, we're just like landing on Mars. It'll take a while. So the microcosm has its own challenges. So don't be so impatient. But in the near future, there will be a signal that will be attuned, perfectly tailored to the horse based on scientific insights that we can only dream of today. Uh, this is my promise to you. We're going to get that done. It's just a question of effort, hard work, and patience. You know, it's beautiful. It's so nice that I was able to show you this. I was a little disappointed that I had to do it so briefly. But those are things that are coming straight from the kitchen, so to speak. It's brand new, and it'll be published in just a few short weeks. And then, so if you if you now respond by saying, so what about the beamer set we have now? I mean, you already saw that. It's an effective product. And how long will you have to wait patiently until you see the research results implemented in a new product? Well, years might go by. So don't pressure me. And until then, you have this product. And that is really okay, too. You, so, you know, I have to say this, this again. Cape Canaveral is nearby here, and uh, at some point we want to go to Mars. So the macrocosm is an amazing, adventurous, uh, an amazing adventure. But the microcosm, this, you have to understand, is just uh, as much of an adventure. And this is where we go into step by step. So that's what I want to to tell you about the horse today. So, ich, uh, ich, uh